Welcome back to Writing Done Right. Well, we always talk about different open source office tools, and some people want to use Microsoft Word. Some people don't like the GUI, the, the UI, what LibreOffice looks like. And on that basis, there's been a new tool that's been coming around a lot lately. I saw somebody in the comment from last video say, hey, I've heard a lot about this. It seemed to come out of nowhere. Is it actually any good? And I've only played around with it a little bit. I can't tell you absolutely for certain, but what I will be able to do here is I'm going to walk you through just a few basics of this new program, and this is called Only Office. Thanks for clicking on this video. I am Tom Morosky, an author and a technology consultant, and today we're going to look at OnlyOffice, which is a new free and open source tool. It contains licensing that's going to allow you to write your books and publish them. Uh, it's not like Microsoft Office where you need to pay an annual subscription fee. Of course, if you find it useful, as you can, please donate to the company because it always helps support the program. The other tools that this has involved in it that I would like to look into in the future is they actually have a really nice tool that will integrate with a WordPress website and give you basically a Google Docs type thing stored inside your WordPress database. I've not played around with this yet. I just saw it as a feature and uh, we will get around to it eventually. It is on my list of videos to look at. But uh, let's go ahead and head on over to the computer and I'll show you what OnlyOffice looks like. So when you install it, it comes with the basic applications you're going to get inside of the lowest tier of Microsoft Office. Of course, if you need databasing and the more advanced drawing tools and a few other functions and features that are missing from this, LibreOffice does include all of those under similar licensing. But if you're a typical person and all you need is documents, spreadsheets, presentations, and you're used to the GUI and the layout of Windows, then you are going to like this application. Even you can see that it's themed to look like Windows 10 in the uh, border layers. Um, since I'm using this as a flat pack on Linux, it may not be uh, pulling in the theming and styles that I have on my own system. That's perfectly okay. In the event, I don't get hung up over does every application I have perfectly match my theme. I get hung up over does the application actually do what it's supposed to do. And for the most part, this does. Inside of our settings, you can set your username, your interface language. You can do your interface scaling. So some people want to change your scaling, their, your theming. You have a light. You have a dark. Uh, there's a classic light. And then you can open files in a tab or in their own window. So you can see how that works. And of course, I'm recording this outside. Dark is really hard to see from the outside. So we are definitely going to keep it on the light interface for this. You can see the connect to cloud button. Of course, I am not on the internet right now. I'm in a park without internet nearby. Um, but you do, you can get a free only office cloud, much like Google Drive. So if you like the features, you're not all that hung up about uh, your stuff being on other people's servers, but eh, you're not a huge fan of Microsoft or Google, you might look into only office and see if that would be a nice next option. If you are running an own cloud or a next cloud instance, you can inter integrate this. I actually do this on my next cloud. I have a my own version of Google Docs, which is on next cloud on LibreOffice, um, but only office does it just as easy, just as well. And then there's a few other options as well. Uh, you can, of course, open a local file, and it will give us a list of our recent files. We can create a spreadsheet, a uh, document, and a presentation, and the form template is going to open up the document with an overlay giving us uh, the forms option, and then we can add more, field, uh, more forms. So this will, in theory, allow you to do a, um, um, some type of text here, right? Um, and I have not used this particular form, so I'm not going to uh, mess around with it here. This is not a comprehensive video. This is an overview of what it can do. But in theory, you can go in here, use these tools, and you can then save it as an interactive form, which you can do with LibreOffice, and it's a very complicated measure. I might try this out uh, in the future, so I need to make more active forms just to see how it's going to work. Your presentation, I have not used PowerPoint uh, since I was teaching 12 years ago, so I do not know how this relates. Uh, it looks as though it's uh, much the same. You have your slide, you, your, your slide title, and uh, somewhere in here there's going to be 
um, your overlays and your, um, uh, your slide templates. So you can see here's your title slide, content section, two content compression. Of course, these are kind of generic, but these are going to be based on the, the theme and the layout that you have. There are a variety of themes and layouts available and probably more options and you can probably build your own as well. Those are features everybody looks at. Um, but all, it does have all the tab functions that do look and work much the same way that uh, Microsoft Office does. Uh, people who have done a lot more with spreadsheets have said that the uh, spreadsheet tool inside of OnlyOffice does work more fluid uh, than LibreOffice. Um, again, I would not know much about that. Um, playing around with it, it seems to do just fine. Um, I wouldn't have a qualm if I, you know, if somebody said you can only use this, I don't think I'd complain about it a whole lot. It looks good. It still functions the same way. I have not had any issues with LibreOffice, um, but some people have reported a few issues, and this is going to work very well with all of your different options. Now, one thing I'm going to highlight here, I could have highlighted earlier, is note the file extension XLSX. This is the docx or the, the XLX format uh, used in Microsoft Office. So that's really where only Office comes out is it says that it is going to be more compatible with uh, Microsoft Office. I don't, for me, don't know exactly what you mean by that because LibreOffice and Microsoft Office files are generally very compatible. The only difference is that you have to understand that docx files and .odt files contain different types of information in their metadata and in their structure. For example, uh, ODT files for LibreOffice contain a lot more information about formatting than Microsoft Office document types can carry. This is why you can produce a book in LibreOffice using the open document format, but Microsoft Office you cannot. This is why people use InDesign and other tools uh, to produce your books, which you can do inside of LibreOffice. But once you're converting your ODT files to a docx file, you're going to lose page formats specifically, and that is what messes up your ability to publish a book. Uh, basically send the book from Microsoft Office to the printer. It doesn't have anything to do with Microsoft Office is bad. It's just that the docx file format is not designed for that. ODT file is. But by default, only Office is going to use the... Um, the Microsoft Office file formats by default. It can use the ODTs, but it doesn't have to. I've been a lot more um, knowledgeable about what is in the writer application since this is the things that I have uh, used the most. And I did do a lot of uh, testing and comparison. Of course, we used this a little bit when we were talking about uh, working with an editor a few videos back. Um, but this looks much like the same layout options that we have inside of Microsoft Office. So it's going to be a little bit less of a culture shift switching to this versus LibreOffice without changing the basic defaults. Of course, if we go to save a file and you have a look down here, the open, uh, excuse me, Office open XML document, um, we have the other options are only Office form template, fillable online form, Word open um, XML document, uh, open document text. Um, we have open documents. So you can see you have a lot of different ones. Now, the one thing I wish that uh, they would do, and uh, if I get around to getting a hold of them, I know they've asked me my feedback before on this application. I would love to see in parentheses here exactly which the document type is. I think... Word open XML document type. I think that this is your docx format, but I'm not 100% sure. You have to poke around to see which one's which. Now, how do they work? Well, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to open up a file. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the file I've been working for. This is an upcoming book I am uh, producing. This is a children's book. If I can find it, here you are. And inside of here, I actually converted to the docx format to use my Libre, uh, excuse me, my uh, Pro Writing Aid account. It doesn't like the ODT formats or it doesn't like images. I'm not sure which. Um, but if I go ahead and open up, I'll open up the black and white one so I don't accidentally break something in my actual formatted, final formatted working manuscript. But here we're going to open this up. And this is a book that was 
uh, laid out. Of course, you can see it's messing everything up. It's stacking every single image, I think, on top of each other uh, because it doesn't know how to read the .odt format as well as LibreOffice would. Um, but you can see here, uh, it is going to work pretty well. Anything, you know, there's some spell checking stuff. Uh, so you can do this. I did notice that it seems to not understand how to use contractions and words like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, there's a didn't. It doesn't know what didn't is. Um, so you can see a lot of different uh, options in here. You can see if you wanted to type with this, it's going to be very good, very fluid. You're just not going to format your book with it. But if you're if you're working on um, working with an editor, you're working with a publisher, and they say they want DocX formats, and you don't like or don't have Microsoft Office, definitely look at only Office. It's going to take a few of the things you need to keep in the back of your head. It's going to keep those in front of you. Um, in, uh, as you're working your workflow. It's going to save in the docx format. It's not going to get boggled down by the other editing things. It's not going to be the .odt file, which some people in that field may not want to see. In my case, I don't care what you send me if I'm producing your book, as long as it's something that I can easily edit. You send me, I actually have had somebody send me something on a raw text file format before. That was strange. But outside of that, um, <laughs> we didn't have much of an issue. All right, um, and so you can see that uh, the layouts are much the same. We have our home, we have our insert, we have our layout, we have all the different tools that we have. There are some plugins, you can do uh, some different plugin things like that. And overall though, what you can see is that the system does work really well as a familiar intuitive um, interface and overall it's going to work well for you. So. Um, if you do like the format of Microsoft Office, or but maybe you're like you don't have a licensed copy and you're worried about the legality of using your you know student copy or whatever other copy to write your book on, this matches all licensing that you need. Some people say, what are you even talking about? Yeah, do you know if you have a student license for book, if you went to school and you bought your student copy of Microsoft Office, you cannot use that for any commercial application that is in the licensing. Uh, which includes writing a book because if you're going to write a book, presumably you're going to write the book and sell it and publish it online or Amazon or whatever else. You, that is a violation of license term and we do not want to violate laws. That sounds weird and petty, but that's the way our, our society works and I encourage you always to follow the laws. So if that is where you're at, use this. Works just fine. Um, so definitely have a look at only office and if you guys want to see some more in-depth more specific things I'd be glad to do that. I really want to learn this software tool um, I'm stipping perfectly with LibreOffice because it has the more advanced tools and functions that I need But this is a good tool. It is an excellent application. It is cross-platform I'm doing this tutorial on Linux. You can do uh, download only office for Microsoft uh, Office or excuse me uh, Windows. <laughs> That's how much I use Windows uh, Windows or Mac, it is available on both of those, only over on their website. Uh, they should be well easily signed, so it shouldn't give you any uh, any real issues, but uh, no guarantee on that. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, have a look over the website, writingdoneright.net. I have a lot of tutorials, text, and other things like that over there. With that, thanks for watching, and I hope that we have helped you to get your writing done. <laughs>